You know, it's been a real landmark for the embassy since its construction in 1988, when it was built to commemorate the 60th birthday of, of His Majesty King Louis Pont Adulidet the Great. He was very much a galvanizing figure who had been able to bring the country together. And so, as a result, the effort to commemorate his memory or his birthday, you know, that really adds resonance to that structure. It, it is a, a very much a physical manifestation of the appreciation and reverence of the embassy community for the king. And so it's become a real landmark for us and it's a really very much part of our cultural heritage portfolio. King Raman IX was the only king to be born in the United States. And I think these two salas existing out there always is going to showcase that history and then give the new generation a chance to learn more about what a great king Rama the Ninth was and how strong the relationship between Thailand and the United States was. And hopefully these two salas are a representation of, of, of what could be. It was constructed in the traditional Sala way in that it was a, a Sala building, much like a barn building here in the United States. It was the local staff and the American staff that was there coming together to build it themselves. You know, the ambassador hammered in the first nails. So I think it represents a big part of tradition in Thai culture. And again, it was a way that it brought our two countries together by building it. The final design is set out by the architect, Obas Falepikara. He wrote and explained the whole design for the project. And then he's the one that discussed it with the Royal Institute and got them to approve the actual project. My father always believed that architecture should explain itself. And that's the reason why there are two sala, because once you see it, you know, this is for the king, so all oh, the Thai will see that and know immediately what it is for. Not every sala does have a royal sala attached to it. Typically, they are just standalone buildings that are meeting places. So we have the larger sala, which serves that purpose, but then it does have that separate special box for the royal family. And it's much more ornate architecturally than the, the main pavilion. Again, because it's almost, in a way, a gift to that king and, and that royal family. The people want it to be ornate and they want it to be something special to really represent the royal family because they're much more hierarchical in, in society. There's all these uh, little nuances within the design that are reflective of various cultural elements. If you go back and look at some of the temples, you know, the styles of the sala, the way the roof is designed, you know, there's various features, like the volutes, you know, reminiscent of the Naga, very much a symbolic creature that, you know, protected the Buddha when he was meditating. Religious and cultural aspects are, are always built into the design. The structure itself captures that, but it's also become so much part of the embassy community that it really has so much more symbolic meaning for us. it 
at our special events like Thai New Year celebrations, water blessing ceremony for Ambassador and DCM and his family, and also we do the award ceremony and welcome the Ambassador. And so it's the, the place that we use for our special events. I think this is to share the culture, our traditional Thai culture with American who come to post and they can feel the atmosphere in Thai pavilion and see all the arts and feel the, the nature of Thai old style pavilion. This Salat Thai and pavilion is the most important building in, in the embassy because it represents the relationship between Thailand and the United States. We have monthly maintenance a program applied to these two buildings because standing on the water they needs a lot of maintenance and it's still the genuine uh, handcraft ornate Thai art like the first day that we install all the parts together. The roof forms really derive from basically Tang period Chinese architecture. There were a number of craftsmen working in Ayutthaya around the 11th century that were introducing some of these kind of stacked roofing systems that they have. But then they added their own innovations, this, this sort of sloping roof that's often a multiple complex roof, the kind of telescoping of the roof, all of which is to kind of convey a sense of lightness and a sense of, again, ethereality, if you will, so that they seem to almost be ready to fly off. I think the salas are really important because it's a tangible structure, but it's also sort of the intangible. You know, when somebody builds a sala, it sort of raises their stature within the religious world. Again, because I think the sala is a significant structure within Thai culture, even in the rural areas, you know, you'll find them. So I think that's another reason why it's really important to preserve it and not let it just deteriorate and become a ruin.